This is a really fascinating video. We're going to look at something called abnormal molar masses and something entirely new called Van Tau factors and relate all of this to colligative properties. So before you check this video out, I think it's a good time to revise what on earth elevation of boiling point was, depression of freezing point was, and how we use these ideas to find the molar mass of the solutes that were involved in making these solutions. Okay, these were the equations associated with elevation of boiling point, depression of freezing point. There were different constants involved, molal ebuloscopic constant and the cryoscopic constant. And that small m right there, that was the molality. Moles of solute divided in by one kilogram of solvent, not solution. And we use this to find the molar mass of the solute involved. Now, if I give you the example of two different solutes, KCl and CSCCOH, and you use this whole thing to find their molar mass, what would happen? Do you remember, by the way, how we found out the molar mass of the solute? If you don't, quick bit of a recap. Yeah, this is molality, which was moles of the solute divided by mass of solvent yeah blue is solvent this orange is solute and then you put down moles as mass divided by molar mass so this is what we are trying to find okay this m2 is what we are trying to do over here now if you follow this exercise you're going to get weird masses that are not their real value it's going to be completely incorrect and that's what we're going to explore like what why is that why would you get incorrect masses okay when you put KCl in water, it immediately dissociates and gives you K plus and Cl minus. And if you put CSCCOH in water, something even weirder happens. It dimerizes. Okay, and there's a double-headed arrow here, means this reaction doesn't go to completion. You know, the whole equilibrium idea. So, you get an incorrect molar mass because you didn't account for this whole association. In this first case, it is association. And in the second case, this dissociation. We didn't account for this. All right. And which is why, let's not call it incorrect anymore. These are simply abnormal molar masses. So let's do a little bit of math and get the exact value. What did we do that was incorrect and how can we fix it? What is molar mass? It's a mass in grams of one mole of a substance. So mass is not changing. Maybe it's the moles that's changing. If you're thinking that, you're absolutely right. On the left-hand side, there's an increase in moles as you put it in water. And on the right-hand side, there's a decrease in moles, which is what leads to abnormal molar masses. We can figure this out, don't worry. Do the whole equilibrium setup, right? If you start with n moles initially, what is the change and what is the final number of moles? You're just going to do that, run through the motions. Left-hand side first, there's a change. Assume that it dis dissociates completely. So if you put n moles, all of it dissociate and give you n moles of K plus and Cl minus ions. Okay, so the final moles now is 2n. Clearly, right? So you're going from n to 2n. Okay, this one's easy. Now, in the right-hand case, from equilibrium ideas, you had a concept of degree of dissociation. Similarly, you can talk about degree of association here. Some value x that lies between 0 and 1. Because this reaction has a double-headed arrow, which means it doesn't go to completion. Okay, so now the change is minus nx, where x lies between 0 to 1. You'll notice that I've formed nx by 2 being formed and not nx. Why? Because the mole ratio, the stoichiometry over here. I'm going to write down stoic <laughs> to show that this 2 is to 1 is extremely important. Okay. So if 2 moles of CSCCOH react, you'll just get 1 mole of the whole dimer. So if x moles are reacting, x by 2 get formed. That's it. So nx react and nx by 2 get formed. All right. From here, to get the final mole, I just have to subtract both of these. So n minus nx becomes n into 1 minus x. And here, you get nx by 2. But be careful here. Just like here, to get the final moles in the LHS, you added them up. You need to do the same thing over here to get the final moles. So then n becomes n into 1 minus x by 2. Easy peasy. Please, do this from first principles all the time. You do not have to mug any formula to do this. Okay? Depending on stoichiometry, whether association or dissociation is happening completely, do it like this. Okay, now that we've done this, 90% of our job is done. So what's changing is clearly the number of moles is changing. Mass is the same. Okay, great, great, great. So what is the molar mass that we calculated that was incorrect or abnormal? This value. Oh, this is lower than what it should be. Moles increased, but molar mass decreased. Similarly, in this case, moles decreased, but molar mass increased. 
You can see that, right? That is what I want to point out. So I need to multiply this with some factor to get back to the normal molar mass. And that's what we're going to do. Right? This is abnormal. Scratch out that AB. To get back to normal, I need to multiply it with that factor. This factor is known as the Wandt Hoff factor. I don't know if you know this, you know, Van Hoff was the first person to win a Nobel Prize in chemistry. You should read up on that. It's pretty interesting. Anyway, the factor that we're talking about, it's simply I, which is final moles divided by initial moles. Hmm. Okay. All right. Final moles divided by initial moles. So in this case, it's going to be simply 2. And in this case, it's simply going to be 1 minus x by 2. Oh, all right. So I had the molar mass to be m by 2n and I multiplied by 2. Hey, would you look at that? I've accounted for that abnormal mass and I've now got the real mass. Excellent. Similarly, I've got uh, whatever this factor was. I'm just, I'm just multiplying by the same factor again. Oh, there you go. Problem solved. So this accounts for the change in the moles of solute, right? You expect it to be something, but actually it's something more or low, lower than what it should be. And well, then shouldn't it affect all colligative properties, not just uh, whatever we are doing here? If you're thinking that, you're absolutely right. It affects all colligative properties. Wherever you have moles of solute, that is going to be affected by this Vantoff factor. So now, relative lowering of vapor pressure becomes I times X2, delta P1 by P01 times is equals I times X2. And elevation and boiling point is delta Tf is I times Kfm, delta Tb is I times Kb times M, and osmotic pressure pi is I times CRT. Oof, would you look at that? Everything gets multiplied by I. Ah, okay, we already hypothetically figured out what to do with molar masses. But if I were to define I, how do I define it? If I write down that this I is going to be equal to normal molar mass divided by abnormal molar mass, does that make sense to you as a definition? This is what you'll see in books. But does it make sense to you? You remember this abnormal molar mass in case of KCL, just before this, you can just rewind and see this if you want. M by 2N was the mass and I multiplied this with I, right? Oh yeah, it tracks. Abnormal molar mass into I gave me M by N, which is the actual molar mass. All right, sweet. So this equation works as well. Always check if your equations make sense. And lastly, this is also something you'll soon see in some books. The definition also says that, oh, I is observed colligative property divided by colligative property that's calculated. Hmm. What is observed? This right here is observed. What's calculated? It's simply Kb times M. You divide both of these, you get I. That's what we're saying. You apply it to all different colligative properties. And that was the relationship between abnormal molar masses, Vantoff factor, and colligative properties. You should definitely read about Van Hoff, who won the first ever Nobel Prize in chemistry.